Hello, this is Berhane Selassie. This is part two of my Psalm 22, verse 16 video, Karaua or Karai. And uh, this one will be based most likely off of translations, the Dead Sea Scrolls. I'll be discussing it. Again, it's about whether or not it should read uh, pierced, or, or rather dug, or like a lion in Psalm 22, because it's generally considered a messianic psalm by Christians, whereas the Jews reject it as such, as particularly referring to Christ, and they wanted to say it's like a lion. Anyway, let's go through the verse uh, again. <clears throat> Psalm 22, 16 in the Masoretic text reads, Karai yada veragle, raglai, I should say. Like a lion, my hands and feet. There's no at, there's no on. Yeah, they say it's implied. Uh, whereas a Christian would say, they have gouged my hands and feet. Uh, anyway, um, Anyway, let's go through it. Uh, the word karai means like a lion. Kari, referring to lion, and ka, referring to like or as. The issue is that Christians have always read this as they have pierced or dug. We find the word pierced in several ancient translations. It's not something Christians just made up. Uh, we have uh, the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Old Hebrew Old Testament, much of which is older than anything or most of what we have in Hebrew, certainly older than the Masoretic text that we have today that's preferred by uh, the Jews and certainly anti-missionaries and here in the Septuagint you can read it right here this word is uh, Uri An uh, referring to dig slash bury you can look it up click the link right here on my blog uh, it's 20 I think it's verse 21 Septuagint I accidentally wrote 22 uh, but he says and then it says charas, which refers to the hands of me, and kai, uh, pulled us my feet. Um, anyway, here's the translation. They have gouged my hands and feet. Uh, so that certainly favors the Christians. And then here's a, a Peshitta text, which is written in Aramaic. And uh, the, I can't read it. But anyway, it's you can click the word. It'll go, go to the Cal website. And uh, the word right there means to dig bury, wound, pierced. Uh, that's that's Peshitta text, which is very old, a cognate language of Hebrew. Anyway, here's another one, Latin Vulgate, which is 4th century, by, made by St. Jerome. It says, Folierunt manus meas et pedes meus. Uh, which is just saying, uh, they, de they dug my hands and my feet. Folierunt, meaning to dig. I used to have a link for that there. Uh, then, uh, then also we have the Targum of the Psalms, which are written in Aramaic also. They're used by Jews, they're preferred by Jews, and uh, it's very traditional how they read it. Sometimes it's very straight, plain, forward reading of the text, a homiletic reading, or uh, what have you. But anyway, here's what the Jewish Targum says about Psalm 22, verse uh, 17. Now the Targum uses the word, They bite my hands and feet like a lion. Uh, so biting implies piercing or digging into. Um, anyway, you can check the words right here. It has got a, got a E, which means like a lion, but it also has another completely separate word uh, for biting. Nakanatin, something like that. Anyway, it makes it obvious that uh, the psalm is referring to, a, to biting or a piercing. Uh, what else would you would expect the line to do with your hands and feet? The Mesorek text does not explicitly say, though it should be obvious, and anti-missionaries act like a lion would not pierce the hands and feet. Uh, and, I don't know, maybe they think they, the lion would just lick them. I don't know. Anyway, finally we have uh, Psalm 22, also found the Dead Sea Scrolls. Nachal uh, Hever, you have, you have the number in mis listed right here. Uh, the link's provided below. It's found on Israel's Antiquities Authority. And here is a picture of uh, the particular verse in contention. And here's what it reads. Right here, I've underlined, uh, kara, this is the this is the kaf, this is the aleph, this is the resh, this is the vav. Uh, and then you have yadi right here, referring to my hands. But anyway, kara i, kara u, I should say, kara u, which means... Uh, dug or dig. The only weird thing about it is it has an aleph right there. 
and that's something uh, missionaries, anti-missionaries will uh, try to exploit. Anyway, it clearly has a vav instead of a yud, which means it's a, a kara'u, not kara'i. But anyway, uh, you can find the link to the authority right there of, for this picture of the text. It's an unusual spelling, not found anywhere else in the Hebrew uh, Masoretic text, I should say. I haven't been able to go through all the Dead Sea Scrolls about it. Uh, but instead of the word, uh, like a lion, this is evidence Christians did not tamper with the text. Uh, but it may very well have been the original. The only difference between the two words can be seen in the fragment is that the Yud is smaller than the Vav, Kara'u. It has a Vav, whereas Kara'i, Kar'ari, actually I screwed up, it should have one A there and two A's here, has a Yud, Kara'i has a Yud at the end. So an error could have happened in either making the letter uh, too long or too short. Too long in the case, uh, it should have been a Yud, but it was uh, elongated to a Vav or too short in that it was uh, a Vav and shortened to a Yud, which is what Masoretic text has now. Uh, concerning the word to dig, Kara'u, Elsewhere, it's spelled in the Hebrew Bible, lacking the Aleph, right after the Kaf, in the middle of the word. And here's all the times I found it. Uh, you have Psalm 57, verse 6, or verse 7. They dug Kara'ul before, before me a pit. Kara'ul lefne shachara. And then you have uh, Psalm 119, verse 85 in the Mesoretic text. The proud have dug pits for me. Uh, Kara'ul li so on. Uh, Jeremiah 18, uh, Kikaru'u, Shechucha, uh, they have dug a pit for my soul. Uh, verse 22, it says, Kikaru'u, Hashulcha, uh, they have dug, and then it refers to a pit to take me. Uh, that's all the times it appears. Now here's all the times that, as a line appears, it appears four times in the Hebrew Bible, the Mesoretic text, I should say. Uh, here, of course, the one we already mentioned, Psalm 22, verse 16, Kara'uk yada veragle, like a lion, my hands and feet. Uh, so, then you have Numbers 24, verse 9, he, he couched, he crouched, I think it should say crouched. Uh, he, he lay down as, as a lion, and a lioness who shall rouse him up. And you see here it says Kara'i, uh, Isaiah 38, verse 13, it says, uh, the more I make myself like unto a lion until morning, uh, the more I break all my bones, it breaketh all my bones. Uh, finally, Ezekiel 22, verse 25, also uses kara'i. Uh, there is a conspiracy of the prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion raving the prey, ra ravening the prey. Uh, we could see... The word they have dug does not appear to be spelled in the ordinary way, but it's certainly not a way, and certainly not a way used elsewhere in the Masoretic text. Yet, like a lion, yet the like a lion simile does not really make a whole lot of sense in Psalms 22 verse 16, since it doesn't explicitly mention uh, any action. Uh, just says like a lion, my hands and feet. Some Jewish translations change it to like a lion at my hands and feet, as I mentioned before, or like a lion, they are at my hands and feet. Uh, to try to make more sense of it. It is interesting that the ancient missionaries insist on an error despite the fact that the ancient Aramaic, Greek, Latin, and at least one Dead Sea Scroll, which is written in Hebrew, read dug or pierced. This is not all the only instance where the Mesoretic text is in the minority. A similar case uh, where it's in the minority is found in Genesis 4 verse 8 where the Mesoretic text lacks the Canaan, what Cain says to Abel. All the other texts, including, including the Samaritan text, the, the Syriac Peshitta text, the Latin Vulgate, the Dead Sea Scroll, not, yeah, I think it's the Dead Sea Scroll too, I'll double check on that. Uh, and uh, I think it's the Septuagint reads, uh, let us go into the field. But anyway, uh, let's go on. In the Masoretic text of the Psalm, we see also there's also a variance even in the Masoretic text. I think there's also a variance in uh, the Kara'u Kara'i uh, uh, dilemma. Uh, but anyway, here's one of them. Uh, Psalm 100, verse 3. It says, Hu shachanu velo anachnu. He made us not ourselves. The word velo, there's a homophone. This one means and not right here. 
But uh, the homophone, which is a variant, also reads he may reads uh, the same, pronounced exactly the same, except it means he made us and we not we are his. Uh, this is preferred by the Protestants, whereas uh, traditionally the Latin Vulgates and the Catholics have preferred, preferred he made us and not ourselves. We didn't make ourselves, he made us. Whereas the Protestants and the Jews typically prefer the the one with the Vav as, that says it and we are his. Uh, anyway, so we see a small error crept into the manuscript tradition based on a, on two letters that look alike but make the same sound in regards to uh, Psalm 100, of course. Uh, the but they produce a completely different reading of the text. If an error so significant could have been made here, why not in Psalm 22, verse 16? And the original meaning, reading have been, they have dug, uh, theoretically, uh, been spelled correctly. I mean, theoretically, it could have been spelled uh, the normal way. But anyway, finally, the Hebrew text, even the Torah, contains several defective spellings of words frequently. I know I say defective, it doesn't mean necessarily mean it's spelled wrong, it just means it might be spelled in a different way, a longer way, a shorter way, might it be an extra letter that's silent or something like that, uh, which rabbis have historically exploited for geometric purposes, saying, oh, look, the verse is expound, elongated by an extra uh, yud, uh, signifying uh, some esoteric meaning or something like that. Anyway, they'll interject some midrashic idea as to why it is spelled that way. It is possible that the Septuagint, Peshitta text, and Dead Sea Scrolls was based on some form of defective spelling that no longer exists, and perhaps the Dead Sea Scroll just added an aleph. Who knows? Um, also, I should mention that the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, typically a lot of, in a lot of places, they just randomly throw in extra <laughs> letters. Uh, for instance, there's one verse, and I think it's uh, Isaiah 43, verse 15, where the word Malach is spelled a very, Malachem, is spelled in a very interesting way. It has two ayins, uh, before the, before the Lamed and after the Mem, which I don't know why they would do that, but, uh, in Dead Sea Scrolls, you'll see, uh, like, Alice being switched for, uh, ayins, and Alice replacing Chez, and all sorts of, uh, goofy stuff, Alice being missing and, or being added, and, uh, and those ions just being thrown in there for fun. Anyway, this is Berhain Lassi, Orthodox Catholic. This is my second and hopefully final video on Psalm 22, Kara'i versus Kara'u.